Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the Best Damn EDC, and I have a whole lot of knives here on the table today. Just full disclosure, this video was supposed to happen back in like December or January, and then life happened. You guys know the story now. Wasn't making videos for a hot minute, but here we are. We're back. And this is the entire 2020 lineup from Civivi. So yeah, there are new knives. They've announced new knives, and they have actually, I think, released some new knives for 2021. But we'll get to those. This is the 2020 lineup, and there are some gems in here that I think you guys are really gonna like that you may not know about. That's why this video exists. So with that said, this is the 2020 lineup from Civivi, and let's do the damn thing. So not only did Civivi send me a ton of knives to talk about here, and I'm not gonna dwell on too many of them for too terribly long because this video would be like an hour long, but they also sent me extensive information on each and every one of these. This is all stuff that you can look up, obviously, but I will cover the highlights of everything that I can. I'll try my best to get through as much as possible, but one of the things that we can just get out of the way really quickly is all the clips are almost identical. Obviously no clips on the fixed blades, but they're all deep carry. Pretty much all of them are left hand or right hand tip up only. The exception is actually one of the only knives that wasn't technically released in 2020 and that is the Elementum, which is left hand only. The other thing to note really quickly is that everything here on the table folding wise, not fixed blades, has caged ceramic ball bearings except for two of the three slip joints. One slip joint is also caged ceramic ball bearings. The other two are fossil bronze. I will note that when we get to them, but everything else caged ceramic all bearings for the pivots. So since there are so many knives here on the table and so many to get through in a short time, uh, I have no order, but this is the first one that I opened when the big box of knives was sent to me from Civivi. And this was one that I was actually super interested in getting my hands on. And this is the Asticus. It is a very big knife. It is a nearly nine inch long folder. This is 8.81 inches long and closed length on it is five inches. So <laughs> closed is still a very big knife. And then your blade length on this is 3.8 inches. Um, you have a drop point D2 blade with a hollow grind, big swedge up top, and this is a belt satin finish. Uh, you also have stainless steel liners, uh, G10 covers or scales on that, as I mentioned, uh, left or right hand tip up deep carry pocket clip and caged ceramic ball bearings. And the opening method on this one is flipper. No secondary opening method, but this thing just absolutely flies open and almost drop shut, not fully on its own, does need a little convincing to totally drop shut. Once again, this is the Asticus from Civivi, and you can expect to pay anywhere from $55 to $90 for this. There is a Damascus blade version with carbon fiber scales. That's the one that's gonna set you back about 90 bucks, but most of them are gonna be right around $55, maybe a little more depending on where you buy it. But again, the Asticus. The next knife is the only front flipper of the bunch, and this is the X-Arc. This is a very long slender blade, very different from the other one, which was a big bulky knife. Uh, this one is very, very slim line and carry, and it's one of the best budget front flippers that you can probably find right now. Not many companies do budget front flippers, so VV absolutely nailed this, the action is great. Technical specs on this one, you have an overall length of 7.33 inches, a closed length of 4.11 inches, and then your blade length on this one is 3.22 inches. That is, again, a drop point in D2, hollow grind with a satin belt finish, uh, G10 scales, stainless steel liners, it is a liner lock, and this thing just absolutely flies open. There's not much else to say about this knife other than if you were in the market for a budget-friendly front flipper, which is a question I get a lot, actually, um, this is a really, really great option for that. And you can expect to pay, once again, about $50 to $95. You'll pay more for the Damascus and carbon fiber version, but this is the D2 with G10, and most of those are gonna be sticking around that $50 mark. So the next four knives are extremely similar knives. Uh, I'm gonna kind of break it down into two different parts. So we have the full-sized Bull Mastiff and Mastodon, and then the Mini Bull Mastiff and Mini Mastodon. And really, the big difference between these is the blades. Your Bull Mastiff has has this large fuller and the Mastodon has the hole. That's really the main difference between these. They're the same size, roughly the same shape, come in various configurations, and the mini versions are the exact same. Just 
smaller. But let's talk hard specs on the large size. With your large bull mastiff, your overall length is 9.06 inches. The closed length is 5.23 inches and your blade length is 3.83 inches. This is a cleaver style. Maybe you could consider it a Warncliffe uh, 9 CR18 MOV flat grind with a stone wash finish. This one is gonna be mostly the exact same. Same length, same close length, same blade length, same blade steel. The big difference is no fuller in the hole. The other big difference between these is gonna be weight because that large fuller cuts down on that blade stock a little bit. So this one is 5.27 ounces or 158 grams. And the Mastodon is uh, 5.8 ounces or 164.3 grams. The other thing that you can't do, so you can't do this with the Mastodon, but with the Bull Mastiff, you can Spidey Flick it because that fuller gives you something to grip. So if you wanted a secondary opening option, that fuller does work for that. Moving on to the mini versions, your overall length on both of these is 7.17 inches close length of 4.2 inches, and your blade is actually just under three inches at 2.97 inches. Same blade steel, 9CR18 MOV with a flat grind stone wash finish. Um, blade thickness on this one is a little thinner. It's three millimeters or 0.12 inches. And the weight on these, uh, much lighter. 3.5 ounces on the Mini Bull Mastiff, that's 99.5 grams, and 3.6 ounces on the Mini Mastodon. And the same holds true with the Mini Bull Mastiff. You can flick it open. All four of these have forward finger choils for gripping up, more fine-tuned cutting, and your pricing on these is gonna range from about 56 to $67 for the large size and the smaller ones are gonna be more 50 to $60, just depending on where you buy them. Like everything else in this video, you do get some variants in colors. With the Bull Mastiff, it comes in this OD green, a blue and a black. And then with the Mastodon, you get a red, green, and black color option. Next up, we have the Civivi Dogma, and this is a really nice medium-sized flipper, also with a thumb hole, which you can use to spidey flick, forward finger choil, and a nice big clip point. Uh, I really like the looks of this knife. It has this jigged G10 scale, which is a little different, something you don't always see. But the overall length on this knife is 7.7 .7 inches, Close length is 4.24 inches and your blade length is 3.46 inches. Again, this is a clip point in D2 blade steel with a hollow grind and a satin belt finish. Uh, blade thickness on this, three millimeters or 0.12 inches. Your weight is 3.23 ounces, that's 91.5 grams. Uh, and again, you have cage ceramic ball bearings, amber dextrous tip up pocket clip, very deep carry, and a liner lock. All of these are liner locks. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, skeletonized steel liners, this jig G10 scale, and your big Civivi decorative pivot. I really like this knife. Uh, the color doesn't really do it for me, but it does come in different colors. So you have a green, a blue option, a gray G10, and a black G10. So uh, lots of different colors if you are not into the blue, you want something more like a green like I would. Once again, this is the Dogma and it will set you back about $50. The next knife on the table is actually, I think the smallest knife out of the whole bunch here. Uh, and you guys know me, I go back and forth between wanting a bigger and a smaller knife, but there is a limit where I think small knives get too small. And this one, uh, when I picked it up and first looked at it, that's how I felt about it. But after holding it and flipping it and using it a little bit, I actually really, really like this knife. This one kind of makes me think of the Fox Knives Suru designed by Jesper Voxnes in that it's just a maximization of space and perfect ergonomics. And that's why I really like the guys over at Ferrum Forge. They are masters of ergonomics, just like Yen Zanso and Jesper Voxnes. They know how to make a knife ergonomic, even if it's really small and that makes it functional. So this is the Odium designed by Ferrum Forge Knife Works. The overall length on this knife is just 6.19 inches. The closed length is 3.54 inches and your blade length is 2.65 inches. That is a drop point D2 blade with a high flat grind with a coated stone washed finish. Again, flipper on bearings with a deep carry pocket clip that can be reversed, tip up only. And it also has a thumb hole, which you can use to deploy it with your thumb or if you like spidey flicking, do that as well. Really nice big front finger choil. You can get a really good grip on this knife and I think that maximizes uh, the utility of it. I think this is a really good size and shape. Small for some people, for sure. If you got larger hands, maybe not for you, but this right here, 
it fits like a glove in my hands. Once again, it comes in different colors. You get an orange colorway, some blue scales. I think there's like a white or a jade, black like this one, there's gray, and not all of them have the coated blade. I think actually there's a, a black scale without a coated blade and then this one with the coated blade, um, but that's the only coated blade is the, the black scale. So if you want coated blade, you gotta get a black scale, but if you want the stone wash blade with no coating, you can get it with a different color scale. Once again, that is the ODM designed by Ferrum Forge Knife Works, sold by CVV. I think this is a really good sleeper knife. Not many people are clamoring about this thing, and I think part of that is because of the size, but I think it's a really good functional knife. Uh, but they'll set you back about 53 bucks, and I think for that, this is a really, really good buy. Next up is the very first slip joint on the table. This is the Fracture. You wouldn't know that it was a slip joint just by looking at it because it looks like something you would fling open with a spidey flick, but it is not. If you try, good luck. I couldn't do it. It's got a pretty hard pull on it. Not very hard, but hard enough to make it too difficult to flick. You have these nice bright orange scales. It does come in some other colors like blue and OD green and gray and black, uh, but you have this Tonto blade. So it's kind of a Franken knife in, in that it is a slip joint with a pocket clip and a Tonto. Not something you see every day, not totally unheard of, but it is a little unusual. Your overall length on this knife is 7.74 inches. Your closed length is 4.39 inches and your blade length is 3.35. You have a Tonto 8CR14 MOV flat grind with a stone washed finish. Uh, blade thickness on this one is 0.1 inches or 2.5 millimeters. And you have actually a pretty skinny handle on it too because there's no frame lock. Um, the steel liners and G10 scales keep it pretty slim at just 0.39 inches or 9.9 .9 millimeters. The weight on this one is 3.12 ounces or 88.5 grams. And this again is one of the few that is not a caged ceramic ball bearings. This has phosphor bronze washers because you don't, you're not gonna be flipping this thing open. You don't need ball bearings in the pivot. And the price on these is extremely affordable at just $30. But of course you're getting eight CR 14 MOV steel, 30 bucks. I think this is a really killer slip joint. If locking blades are illegal where you are, or you prefer something like a slip joint, I think this is a really cool option. The next knife we're gonna talk about, I think is my favorite knife of all the ones that Civivi sent in this big package. And it was one that wasn't on my radar before. Uh, this thing is actually really cool. The biggest thing for me is having to sharpen it, but we'll get there to that point. This is the Keen Natter, and it is a recurve Tonto flipper with a thumb stud and a fuller. So there are actually three opening methods with this knife. You can thumb stud flick it, you can spidey flick it with the thumb stud on the backside. You can use the flipper tab, or if you want, you can use the fuller if you want. It's also a medium sized knife, not super large, especially not when you compare it to the Asticus, which is definitely a very large knife. Um, this one is more medium sized with an overall length of 8.2 inches. Your close length is 4.72 inches. And your blade length on this one is 3.48 inches. Again, that is a recurve Tonto uh, with Bowler N690 steel and a stone washed finished blade. Your blade thickness on this one is 0.15 inches, so 3.7 millimeters. It's one of the thicker blade stocks on the table. Handle thickness is 0.5 inches. Your weight is 3.88 ounces or 110 grams. And like I said, you've got multiple options for opening it. Flipper, fuller, thumb stud on both sides. Uh, it is a liner lock, steel liners that are skeletonized with micarta scales. So that's the big difference here. This is one of the first ones with micarta, a little micarta backspacer and a little bit of a longer clip on this one. Most of the ones that we've seen so far are much shorter clips. So because this one is micarta, it comes in this OD green. There's also a natural micarta, but there is a black G10 version, which is a very coarse G10. And the action on this one is so good. It is totally drop shut. And it is the best action I've seen from Civivi, which is saying something because Civivi nails the action every single time. But this knife is Really nice, it was a sleeper. It wasn't on my radar at all, but this one you can get for about $75. Really good deal, especially with that Bowler N690. Good blade steel, great action, great lockup. No problems out of this knife at all. I just really surprised me with this one. The next knife is actually the other clip point. This is the Ortis. This one is actually just a hair shorter than the other one. They are very, very similar knives. One of the only differences between these two knives uh, one is a little bit longer and one has a more squared handle. This one again is the Dogma. Look how close it is to the Orchis. They're just 
very, very similar knives. They do have slightly different lines. As far as specs and everything go, almost tit for tat. So your overall length on this one is 7.48 inches. Your closed length is 4.23. You have a 3.25 inch clip point blade with a 9CR18 MOV steel. It's a hollow grind with a belt satin finish. Uh, your blade thickness on this one, 0.12 inches or three millimeters. Weight is just 2.87 ounces, very lightweight, uh, 81.5 grams. This one you have, again, flipper with a thumb hole. So you can spidey flick it if you want. Um, this one has FRN scale, so it's not G10. The other one was actually G10. That is another big difference. This again is the Ortis. It comes in a black scale or a blue or a green. You can also get it with a coated blade. And then there is a Damascus version with a carbon fiber handle. The carbon fiber option on this one is actually a twill carbon fiber for the scale. And the price on this knife is between $40 and $105. Obviously the more expensive one being the Damascus with the twill carbon fiber handle, but that is the Ortis. Next up, we have the optioned pintail. So this is the first Damascus option I have on the table with a carbon fiber scale. It's very similar in size to the Odium that I talked about earlier, maybe a little bit bigger. Your overall length on this one is 6.92 inches, so just under seven inches overall. A handle length of 3.94 inches, blade length of 2.98 inches. That is a drop point S35VN or Damascus. This is the Damascus version with a hollow grind and a satin finish. Obviously this one has an etched finish because it is Damascus. The blade thickness on this is actually very thin at 0.1 inches or 2.66 millimeters. Um, and then your weight on this is 2.76 ounces or 78 grams. You have both a thumb stud and a flipper tab on this knife. So you can open it many different ways. It is a liner lock. Again, this is the, the carbon fiber version, but the base on this knife actually comes with micarta scale. So if you like micarta, get this knife in micarta and because of that micarta and s35 vn or the damascus or the carbon fiber this one is actually one of the more expensive civivis with the starting price at about 83 dollars, and that goes up to just under a hundred dollars for this model next up we have what is probably my second favorite knife on the table and this is the badlands vagabond it is almost like a slightly larger elementum very very close in size but it's got a bigger handle, which is what I really like. And it's got thumb studs as well as the flipper tab. But if you want something that's just a little bit larger for your hand, the Badlands Vagabond might be what you're looking for. Your overall length on this is 7.48 inches. Close length is 4.23. Blade length is 3.25. This is a drop point 9CR18 MOV with a hollow grind and a black stone washed blade. Blade thickness is three millimeters or 0.12 inches. And then your weight on this one, Pretty lightweight at 2.97 ounces or 84 grams. The handle on this one, again, is not G10, it is FRN, and it comes with all the same stuff. Cage ceramic ball bearings, ambidextrous tip-up deep carry pocket clip, and a liner lock. That action is just that Civivi butter. It is so smooth, flies out, and this knife is a really solid knife. It sets you back about 40 to $50. It comes in this OD green or a 10 FRN scale. Next up is yet another slip joint. This is the Trailblazer, and it is a seriously solid, solid slip joint knife. The pull on it is very strong. I'd say like a seven or eight out of 10. It's much more strong than the fracture. I can barely start to close with my finger. Very strong. This one is much easier to close. Your overall length on this knife is 6.85 inches with a close length of 3.88, blade length of 2.97. This is a drop point 14C28N hollow grind blade with a stone washed finish. Blade thickness is 0.12 inches or three millimeters. And your weight is 3.19 ounces or 90.5 grams, but it feels really heavy. I think it's just because it's small and it's very dense. It's a very dense knife. This one does have a thumb hole opener, but it is definitely a two-hander if you wanna open it. It has, again, ambidextrous tip-up deep carry pocket clip. This one is one of the others that is on Phosphor Bronze washers, and it will set you back between $75 and $88, depending on where you get it, because it also comes with a Damascus blade if you want that, and carbon fiber scales. That is the Trailblazer. The next knife is the most unique and the very last folder we have on the table and we have two of them because one of these is actually gonna be given away over on Instagram. This is a double detent slip joint knife. So you can push it open and close with ease 
which makes it super fidgety. But just be careful because you can push this thing closed on your fingers and because of that detent, it's gonna fly close. So you could guillotine your fingers if you're not careful. It does have a clip. It is actually uh, not ambidextrous. It is just left hand tip up only. And there are quite a few configurations of this knife. But to get some of the technical specs out of the way, the overall length on this is 6.8 inches. Your close length is 3.84 inches. Your blade length is just under three at 2.96 inches. You have a clip point S35 VN blade or Damascus. It also comes in Damascus. It's a hollow grind with a stone washed finish. The blade thickness is 0 0.10 inches or 2.5 millimeters. And your weight is 2.5 ounces or 70.6 grams. It is a flipper with micarta or rose pattern carbon fiber scales. And this one, the Appalachian Drifter will set you back between 83 and $110. Uh, if you opt for this version, that is obviously gonna be the upper end and this one will be more close to $83. And I believe this one is the one that we are gonna give away over on Instagram. If you wanna see more about that, go follow Civivi, go follow Best MEDC, and uh, we will be doing a giveaway very soon. I've talked about it a few times in this video. You guys are all familiar with the Elementum by now. This again was not a technical 2020 lineup knife but the reason I have included it is because this is uh, an exclusive version that was released in 2020. This is S35 VN with OD green micarta scales. And this has been one of my absolute favorite knives that I've had in the last year or two. I, I really love the Elementum, uh, but I, I bring that up because I don't want you guys to get too caught up on the Elementum because there are some really seriously good knives here on the table. I have really, really fallen for the Keen Natter and the Odium. And if I had to carry a slip joint, this Trailblazer would be in huge contention. This thing is extremely stout with a pocket clip, which is something that I really appreciate in a slip joint that you don't see too terribly often. So all of that's to say, don't get too caught up on the Elementum uh, for a folder from Civivi. They have a lot of really good options. But of course, at the start of the video, you may have noticed that we had some uh, fixed blades here on the table. And that is because Vivi does actually offer some fixed blades. So you have this knife, which is called the Kiri EDC, which is technically a little neck knife. It comes with this ball chain. The Kiri EDC was designed by Alessandra DeSantis. It has an overall length of 5.1 inches. That is a 1.8 inch Warncliffe blade, very small blade in nine CR18 MOV with a flat grind and a stone washed finish. Um, your thickness on this is 0.16 inches. So it's kind of thick for its size. Uh, that's four millimeters for those of you who need the conversion. Uh, weight is just 1.5 ounces or 44 grams, very lightweight. Uh, this will set you back about 40 to $50. And it does come with a little Kydex sheath that you can wear around your neck uh, and a little bottle opener. So a skeletonized neck knife, that is the Kiri EDC. Very ergonomic and you can lay that blade down perfectly flat while holding it. The next knife is the Plonk. So this is something you would carry on your belt or inside your boot or something like that. It has this T-clip, which is similar to the ones I talked about when I did the BMKT video. I think these clips are just a little bit different from that one. Um, they don't have the double lock, but very, very similar to that, that clip that I talked about. Uh, it's got a little finger loop here and uh, extremely ergonomic blade. I actually love the blade shape. This one was actually designed by Torbay Knives. If you look at this from here up, it looks very much like the GMF one from Giant Mouse Knives. Uh, but here back, it's very different as you can grip this thing many different ways. Not exactly my style of knife, but for those of you who want something like this, that is the plonk. The overall length on this thing is 7.43 inches. Your blade length is just 2.87 inches. That is a sheep's foot in D2, a flat grind and a black stone washed finish. Um, blade thickness is 0.12 or three millimeters and your weight is 2.24 ounces. So as big as this thing is, it's very lightweight. That's 63.6 grams. It does come with this T-clip and a Kydex sheath. And the T-clip, just for your reference, was designed by Bob Trzula. And this will set you back 50 to $60. The very last knife here is uh, more of a bushcraft style fixed blade. This is the M2 Backup. It has a kind of a small blade for how big this handle is, but you can really work this blade because of that handle. It's very ergonomic. It's really well in the hand. 
And uh, I actually really like this. It's heavy. It's not something you'd want to EDC, but as an, a bushcraft knife, I could definitely see myself using this. It's got some re really thick blade stock to it as well. Just like the Plonk, it has a Kydex sheath and a T-clip. But your overall length on this knife is 7.81 inches. The blade length is 3.09 inches. That is a drop point in D2 with a hollow grind and a satin finish. Your thickness on this is 0.16 inches or four millimeters. And then your weight is 5.09 ounces. So it's quite heavy, uh, 144 grams. You do get a nice G10 handle, the Kydex sheath, and this one will set you back 60 to $70. And this one, of course, was designed by uh, Alexander Weiss, I believe is how his last name is pronounced, or Alexander Knives. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this one. And if you look very closely right there, there's actually a lanyard hole hidden in the tang, which is really cool. There you go, that is the M2 backup. But that's it, that is the Civivi lineup from 2020. Of course, we're gonna hear more from Civivi in 2021. They've already been doing some really cool things and I, I can't wait to show you guys some of the newer stuff they have coming out, but uh, lots of really cool stuff here on the table today. My favorite, if I had to pick one single favorite knife, um, surprisingly, it would, it would be a very tough call between the uh, Keen Natter and the Odium. If I had to choose just one, it would probably have to be the Keen Natter. It's a weird name, but this knife is surprisingly very good. I like this a lot. The Odium is probably gonna find its way into my rotation. I actually ended up liking this knife a whole, whole lot as well. But I'm gonna give away five of these to random comments. Uh, just let me know what your favorite one was in the comments down below, and I will uh, select five of you, and I'll ship you a knife out of this collection right here. So yeah, that's all you have to do. Just comment down below, tell me what your favorite one that you saw in this video was, and I'll select five random winners. That's it, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. And of course, hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you saw anything in this video that you would like to purchase yourself, hit the links in the description down below. Those are affiliate links. If you purchase anything using those links, it will help support what I'm doing here. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc if you wanna support there, or carrycommission.com where you can buy gear and merch directly from me just like this hat. Also be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us in most places at Best MEDC. And with that said, and until next time, carry on.